So before this video even begins, guys, make sure you watch it to the end. Things didn't go the way that I was expecting them to. A quick little review on this little hinge jig here from Ryobi um, has left me in a bit of doubt. So as far as I can tell, I'm 99% sure that this isn't designed to be used here in Australia and possibly other countries as well. Not on your standard doors anyway. Make sure you watch it. Let me know if I've done something wrong. If not, also comment in the comment section below. Bob's face hasn't changed since the beginning of this video. He's in just as much shock as I am. Watch it to the end and let me know what you think. What's going on guys? I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today we're going to be testing out Ryobi's door hinge installation kit. Let's get straight into it guys. Let's do this. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be testing out Ryobi's hinge installation kit, which is this one right here. I stopped using a traditional hammer and chisel years ago, and I've switched over to using a cordless router. Now this router here is much easier, much faster, and it's generally all around much more efficient to use a router than it is to use a traditional hammer and chisel. You'll get a perfect finish every time, and it doesn't have to be an expensive router. We've got a Ryobi router here, three, four years down the track, it's still working nice and strong. I usually do it freehand, I don't use a jig. Um, many of you guys have seen my previous videos. I line up my hinge on the door, I'll score around the edge using a utility blade, and then I'll take out the material using my router, simply doing it freehand. Haven't had any issues in the past, I enjoy doing it that way. However, I have seen these jigs all around the hardware store for many years, and I've been very curious as to how well they work. A couple videos ago, you guys have suggested um, a couple of times to try out the Ryobi hinge um, installation kit, and that is what we're gonna do today. So something worth noting before we open this up is this whole product here costs probably about $20, $25. It is very, very cheap. Um, and I didn't actually realize that it comes with a router bit. I went looking around the hardware store to find a router bit um, with a bearing on there or a flush bearing so that we can get nice and hard up against the edges. And those router bits alone cost about $10 to $15. So what I realized is that it actually comes with one in the kit, which is awesome. You've got about half the value right there in that router bit. So I just thought I'd quickly share that with you guys. I was pretty happy um, to find the router bit in there. It saved me from having to spend another $15 or so. So we'll open it up and see what's inside. So if we have a quick look at the packaging here, it says that it fits hinges from 35 mil to 100 mil. Now, if you live in the States or any other country that uses inches, um, your little jig here will be set in inches. Now, in this one here is all set in millimeters. So we've got little increments here, 100, 85, 70, 50, and 35. So we've got this little section here that can be removed and it can be moved down to change the increments. So 100, 85, 70, 50, and 35. Um, I'm not too sure if we can do sizing that's in between because I do have a few 90 mil hinges as well, and I'm not too sure how this one here would go in that case, but so far it looks pretty simple. You simply just move it across to line up your increments. It only goes down one way. There's an arrow right there, and that points down to the uh, size of the hinge. We can remove our little attachment from down the bottom, Flip that over till it's square. So just line that one there up. That one there's got now square edge on it. Put it back on our 70. And now it's completely squared off on both tops. Now if we wanted to round them both off, same thing. Pull them out, slot that one there in. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now it's ready for a rounded hinge. So, so far it looks pretty simple to use. I don't really see anything else that's complicated in here. We've got our little clamp that's going to clamp to our door. We've got our little router bit right here. So this one here comes with a quarter inch router bit and we're going to attach that one to the Ryobi router. So if we have a look at the back of the jig here, you'll notice there's two little notches. One of them says 35, 50 and 70 mil thin hinge. The other one says 85 and 100 mil thick hinge. So this one here is a router depth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the depth on my router to make sure it accommodates. Now in my case, I'm gonna be installing an 85 mil hinge. So we'll set this one here on the larger size, slot it in, and we'll adjust, adjust that until we've got it right down on that base. Now you can use little micro adjustments here. Make sure you're happy with it. And that looks about right, right there. 
Perfect. All right, guys, so I've got an old door that we're going to be testing this jig out on. Um, we're going to be installing an 85 mil squared hinge. So squared butt hinge, 85 mil, and we're going to be testing this one here out. So what we need to make sure of is these little corner sections here. We don't need them to be rounded. So we're going to pop these out and then just simply flip them over so it's nice and square. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Pop that one there out, flip it over. Now we've got it squared off. So we're going to have this one here set on 85 mil. And it's now squared off on the top. Line this one here up. Use our clamp. Now I'm not sure if you guys can see there, but that actually lines up perfectly. So I'll move it over so you can see the line there. Line on this side. Square that one there off and it lines up 100% perfect. Tighten it all up and that's now secure. It's not going anywhere and we should be ready to route our little section here out. So I've got my little router bit on there. Now if you notice there's a little bearing on the side here that's going to run around the edge of the plastic so that we don't damage the plastic and we're only going to cut into um, the timber here. So let's see how this one here works. Make a little bit of noise and I'll try and get a good angle for you guys so you can see what's happening. So hopefully that's a little bit of a better angle for you guys but we're going to basically start it off here in the corner. Work our way through. Now being a squared um, hinge here there's not really that much to see but it's going to be very interesting how well it goes into those corners. So let's test it out, make a little bit of noise. But let's back this one here off and have a quick look. Pretty much what I was expecting right here in the corner. It doesn't really square off very well. So it'll be interesting to see how this lines up. Definitely not going to work. Alright guys, so as you can tell right there, the corners aren't very sharp at all. They're almost rounded already. So if I take my hinge right now and slot that one there in, we've got two issues. The first one is it's not sharp enough on the corner right here, which means you won't get a perfect 90 degree edge. And at the same time, it looks like it's almost cut in too far in. So it hasn't factored in the width of the actual hinge. And at this point here, I might actually have to read the instruction manual, which I really don't like to do, but um, that's why I like to try everything out before I do it on site. Make sure that we've got all these little hiccups um, sorted. In terms of width, it's perfect. It's got the exact right amount of wiggle play that you'd need in order to adjust your hinges. Depth, something's not right there. So if we have a quick look at the little jig here, you can see it's basically sitting like that. So when I flip it over, you can see it's got these little pads on the back. And these little pads are basically to stop it from marking up against the door, but it looks like it's exactly that thickness that we're having an issue with. So if I line this one here back up, you can see the gap right there seems to be the exact thickness of those little anti-marking pads or whatever they are, little cushions that they've got in there. So I have a feeling if I remove these cushions here, um, that might fix the problem. Might actually test it out. Better yet, I'll read the manual first and then I'll come back for a second. All right guys, so I've gone through the instructions just to make sure that I haven't missed anything and I am doing things correctly. It states nothing about the width of the actual hinge. So from what I can tell, it might be those two little tabs, the anti-marking tabs on the edge. I'm gonna remove them and try it out in a second. Um, with regards to this little corner here, it actually states that for a squared hinge like this one here, you're still going to have to chisel out those edges. So these corners still need to be chiseled out. What it does is by leaving it as those as I did it originally with a little squared section here, that's going to create a six mil radius, um, which is a quarter inch radius. And if you do put the corners in, then you're going to create a 16 mil radius, which is five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to take off the tabs and we'll try it again and see how we go. All right, so I'm going to start off by removing these little tabs here, these anti-marking tabs. We'll put them on a side for now. I'm not too sure if we're going to actually end up using them again. What I'll do first 
is I'll quickly check the distance. It might actually be the thickness of this little tab, which is almost spot on. So this might actually be the issue here. I'll quickly put these sticky tab thing on the side. And it's not even sticky anymore, so that one is gone now. Get rid of them. Alright, let's test it out one more time. So let's remove this one and see if that fixed our little issue here. If we slot this one here in now, we've still got a little bit of a gap. Now what I'm going to do, the hinges overhang just slightly. I'll quickly chisel out these corners and see how we go. Alright, so we're going to square off this little edge here. See if that makes much of a difference. And we've still got just a little bit too much of a gap. Very interesting. I'll do the same thing on the other side, remove these little padding things on the other side as well. See if that's going to make a difference for me. This might give me just the amount of space that I need. I'll try it again and see if this works this time. Alrighty, let's take off these edges and we can now take our hinge once again and let's see if we fix the problem. Still got slightly a little bit of a gap. So this one here and this one here is about the same. This one here has a bit more of a gap. Now for me personally, this wouldn't be acceptable. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't leave it like this. All right guys, so this is definitely not working out well for me. We've got too much of a gap here. We didn't chisel out the edges. Then we chiseled out the edges. Still too much of a gap. I've taken off all the padding on back and front. Chiseled out the edges and we've still got too much of a gap. So if we have a quick look. Not sure if you guys can see there, but if you guys have a look, that is way too much of a gap. So clearance in terms of length is perfect. This width here is no good at all. Now if I put this jig on, something else that I noticed as well, if you have a look on the side here, you can see we've marked the edge of the door, marked the edge of the door, marked the edge of the door, and the reason for that is not so much because I've been putting it on too tight, it's if you have a look, we've got a little clamping system here, as you turn it, have a look on the back, they've actually got a screw there. And that screw protrudes out past this plastic section here. So without the pads, it's gonna leave a mark. But then even on our first one, it's still left a mark even with the pads. So that's really unacceptable. I would definitely wouldn't use that on a job site um, and risk damaging the door because damage like that isn't gonna be covered by paint. You'd have to sand it down a bit, patch it, and then paint it again. So really not happy with that little section there. But if I clamp this one back on, just to show you guys what's happening, we'll clamp it back on. All right, we'll take out our little guide here. Now if we take our hinge, now this is a standard size hinge, 85 mil hinge. We slot that on the inside. That is as hard up to the door as we can get before we get to that pin. And if you have a look, we've still got that gap all the way down the side, and that's what's causing our problem here. That is as hard up against the door as you can go. If you switch over to another hinge, you'll see we've got the exact same problem. Hard up against it, and we've still got a decent gap all the way down. Now it's possible that I am doing something wrong, but I really doubt it. And to be fair, I did read the instructions, so I can't really say that I didn't read the instructions now and that's why I've got it wrong. But if you have a look here, um, uh, score them around for here. So hinges with the square corner, do not use the corner guides, create route as you would for a six mil radius, remove the mortise and chisel out the squared uh, to square off the corners. All right guys, so I've been trying to play around with this for a while now and I've come to the conclusion that unfortunately 
What it appears to have happened is that this product is originally designed for the US market. Now, they have tried to accommodate to the Australian market using measurements here on the side in metric, which is fine. That works perfect, as you guys have seen. The length is not an issue at all. So I'll just grab another hinge once again, and we've got a perfect fit. Now, the length isn't the issue. The issue is when it comes to the width. The standard width or standard hinge size here in Australia for an internal door, 35 millimeter internal door, is generally either 70 mil by 60 mil or 85 by 60 mil. So in this case here, we've got 85 mil in length, 60 mil is all the way across. So it's the complete span. And when I measure the actual cutout that we've got here, I'll just try to do it with one hand. Okay, so the actual measurement that we're getting right now is sitting at 28 millimeters. So 28 millimeters just for one side is way too deep. It's supposed to be around 25 mil and that's the issue that we're having. So if this one here was cutting at the right thickness of 25 mil, it'll be an absolute perfect fit. So you can see there that little, oops, that little gap on the side, that is the issue that we're having. So just to give you guys a bit more of an example, we've got here the hinge, slot that in and you can see there the gap. I'll take another hinge because this hinge here is about two to three mil in thickness. So if I slot that in that little gap, you can see there, I've now closed that gap there off and we've got a perfect fit. That is exactly what we're after. We're literally about two to three millimeters short. It should be three mil, just to give you that little bit of extra wiggle room as we've got in the length like that. And that's the issue that we're having here. So correct me if I'm wrong guys, but from what I can tell, this has been only half designed for the Australian market. So guys, you are all out there and all around the world. I'm sure for the American market, this one here works fine. You guys do everything in inches. Um, so whether it's a three by three, three and a half by three and a half, or four by four inches, um, you guys won't have this issue. But for us, we've got half in metric, so this side here is fine. And then the width, I've got absolutely no idea what they've done. Um, so this is kind of where I'm up to now. This video didn't really go the way that I had planned. Don't worry about Bob. He's pretty stunned too. He's been standing there just staring at me. I'm surprised he's not shaking his head. I think he's just in shock. But um, honestly, I don't know what's happened. And I'm surprised nobody's picked up on this on, in the past. Like I said, I've seen this product um, at the local hardware store for absolutely for years. And the fact that nobody has picked one up and tried it, and unfortunately it might have even been the case that some person has picked it up, taken it home, tried to do it, and it hasn't worked out, um, and they probably blamed it on themselves. So from what I can tell, honestly, I think that this is just a simple mistake that might, might have come from Ryobi. So if you guys live in other countries, let me know what the standard hinge sizes are for you guys. Um, if you've got some photos, feel free to send them through to me. My email is down in the description below. Um, let me know what your standard, or even put them in the comment section below. What's the standard hinge size in the country that you live in? Um, I'm sure America is um, three inches by three inches, three and a half by three and a half, or four by four. Um, in Australia, they're supposed to be uh, 70 by 60 or 85 by 60 millimeters. UK, I'd assume, should be the same as Australia. Probably wrong. Um, New Zealand should be the same as Australia. But once again, guys, just let me know what's going on because I s honestly can't work it out. The fact that nobody has picked up on this, no one's made a review, I tried to look online. I watched probably about 10 reviews from um, the US and all of them work fine. Your hinges seem to be a lot larger, um, a lot more overhang than what we have here in Australia. Um, our ones are a lot more tight fitting. Um, but I honestly couldn't even find a review from here in Australia. So this is going to be a first. I'm going to upload it. Um, hopefully get some awareness out there. Maybe Ryobi might watch it by any chance and try and figure out what's happened to it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. If somebody wants to let me know, feel free in the comment section below. 
um, my review isn't to bag out Ryobi because I absolutely love their stuff and as you guys have probably seen in my previous videos um, I've got a soft spot for Ryobi I've got um, a lot of Ryobi tools and they honestly make some really good gadgets which I've got another one that I'm going to be reviewing the next couple of days hopefully I don't have any issues but the uh, door strike so I've got the old version, I thought I'd buy the new one, try it out, see if there's much difference between the old and the new one. I use the old one, perfect. This one here, this door hinge. Guys, if you live in Australia, even if you live overseas and um, you're considering getting the door hinge, if you've got a cordless router, just check out my other video that I've uploaded previously and I'll put a link up here and down in the description. Check it out freehand, trust me, much better. Um, you won't have any of these headaches. It's straightforward, really simple to do. Um, it's fun and you won't get it wrong. You can always adjust the thickness um, or the width of the hinges, the width, uh, the length of the hinges. Um, it makes it really, really um, custom to that specific hinge. Because if we have a look here, another example, we've got here the increments. So 85, if we drop it down to 70 okay and i pick up a 70 mil hinge which is this one right here so you can see there 70 mil hinge it doesn't actually fit so we've got the length which is correct sorry i was pointing it the wrong way length is correct but then this one here is even less in width than the um, 85s so we've got an even bigger problem right here and this is a standard sizing for the hinges here in Australia we've got the other issue with the rounded ones um, this one here is a radius um, hinge so curved not squared the issue we have with this one here in Australia once again standard size on the radius is 90 so it's a 90 mil in length but we don't have the increment for 90. We've got 85 straight over to 100. So you wouldn't be able to use this on this tool right here. So like I said, guys, I don't know what's really happened here. Um, hopefully someone will pick up on it eventually and sort this out. But I'm, I'm actually going to take this uh, tool back to Bunnings and return it back to them because this isn't designed for us. It's not going to work for us. It's absolutely useless unless I customize it and start drilling things into it, little packers or anything like that to bring it out that extra three mil. Um, but then I can't use it on the radius hinges and I can't use it on the 70 mil hinge. So for me, I'm just going to go back to what I was doing previously, um, which is still using the router. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Bob sure has. Um, as always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. This video was a straight up review. It's honest as all my videos are. Hopefully you're enjoying them. Until next time guys, I'm Bill and thanks for watching Bill's How To.